Welcome everyone to season number four. And in, during this season, we're going to focus on something special. I will be reading for you all the New Testament, but in a different way. From the original Aramaic. And from that original Aramaic, we will understand the culture, the custom, and the context of Scripture. I will be reading from a book called the Pshita. The Pshita in Aramaic comes from the Syriac language, which means simple, general, open, or straight written version, the common dialect of Jesus and his disciples from the first century. So, this Peshitta is the standard version of the Bible for churches in the Middle East. You know, when the persecution took place in the first century by the Romans and later the second century, the early church had protected the scripture. Originally was written by Aramaic. Jesus' disciples, the Lunga Franca, was in Aramaic. And they protected the priests, protected the scripture. Then the Greek translated scripture. And the Greeks went all the way with the original translation of Greek and then from Greek to Latin and from Latin to English to the West. While the Pshita version of the Bible was forgotten in the East. But still today, the Maronite Church or the Syriac Church or the Syrian Orthodox or the Syrian Maronite, what we say, or the Chaldean Catholic churches, we kept the original translation of the Bible from the Aramaic language. So, my next project is to read for you for free in this course the original Aramaic of Jesus' language and then give you the English translation of the Aramaic. And I will start book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse from the New Testament, from the book of Matthew. So go ahead and register for this course. You can see the link in the description below. And this will be once a month podcast and once a month live on Zoom. And you can join me in this teaching and you can ask questions from scriptures. We're going to take idioms from the Bible that you do not understand. We're going to take parables of the Bible and make it much more simple, much more making sense. I'm going to carry you back in history to the pages of the Bible, to the culture of Jesus, to the custom and context of Scripture. Now I'm going to give you one example only as an introduction just to open your appetite. The Pishita, the simple or common language, is Aramaic. And you have to understand that Aramaic is so simple. The Aramaic, you just speak it and understand it from your heart, not from your mind. An intellectual person without a heart will not be able to grab hold or understand the language in a deep way because it's about the heart and it's not about the mind. By the way, the Greek is about the mind. It's about intellectual more than the heart. So we need the balance. So intellectual people need to control. The Greeks need to have power always are fearful, the fear of losing the power. That is the way of Greek way of thinking, Hellenism. But the Aramaic and the Hebrew way of thinking is the heart, is the person himself. He knows that he cannot own anything or do anything without God at any given moment. He let go. The Aramean way of thinking is not about control. It's about to be alert and your heart will be ready. 
I'm going to give you many examples, the difference between the Aramaic, Hebrew, and the Greek, because Aramaic and Hebrew are very similar. Now, when you think like Jesus in an Aramaic, Hebraic way, your heart rejoices. Your heart sings songs. There is tones. There are rhythms to yourself, to who you are, and who are you created for. There is an expression of personal, unconditional love. Hobo in Aramaic, which means love. Give you another example. Rahmani, which is merciful God. Shbaq, which is forgiveness. It's all about the heart. And not many people are able to hear this kind of language of the heart. So, even, even, it's like healing. It brings a lot of audible, a sensitive quality way of relationship. But in the West, the various languages are connected through the mind, like the Latin and the Greek. Now, do not misunderstand me. They are also beautiful languages. They are also beneficial. But... But it's more masculine, the Greek. It's more rational. It's more pragmatic. It's more scientific and exclusive. It's a language that distinguishes itself by being precise. In that way, Greek is so much unique, which is about the individual. But there's another forgotten language, the Aramaic. All right. It's completely different than the Greek. Many people from the West are unfamiliar of that holistic approach of the Aramaic language. So, the Aramaic has special, is built into a different way of thinking. It's about the community, it's about the heart, it's relational. It gathers more than divides the greek it's about me it's division the aramaic is about the community it's about gathering the community together and the aramaic welcomes interpretation and what tradition calls revelation when you study aramaic or read the scripture in aramaic a revelation of the word of god will take place and even aramaic and hebrew is about prophecy and that what the Western world is missing. And even if they interpret prophecy, they do it in the Greek way. We should understand the culture, the custom, the context, the Aramaic and the Hebraic way of thinking in order to give the right interpretations of prophecy. Aramaic is the language of the angels. It's the holy language, a language of a feeling, empathy. The language of human relationships and it's a Semitic language and it's so much important to understand Aramaic. By the way, I made a course to teach the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic and to teach you how to read and write Aramaic language. And this course you can find the link below. And you can register in that course and you can start to read the 22 Aramaic alphabets. And also you can join me after taking this course or even before in reading scripture of the New Testament in Aramaic once a month on Zoom. Anyway, to explain for you more, the Aramaic language is feminine. We said Greek is masculine, strong, and tough. The Aramaic language is feminine. It's into details. It's visionary. It's empathetic. It's also very poetic and very spiritual and very inclusive and has several layers of meanings. For example, the Greek you can have one, two, three layers of meanings. But in Aramaic, because it's about the community, you can have up to five, six, and seven layers. Why seven layers of interpretations? Because it leads to completion. 
because it's about the community. You continue to discuss and learn the word of God together till you get the deepest le- uh, layer and understand the heart of God because it's deep from inside your creation inner soul how God created you for a reason also you have to understand that Aramaic do not distinguish between the mental the physical the emotional and the spiritual it is all together become a functional revelation word of God that's the beauty of the Aramaic language even in the early church the early church fathers from the early centuries we have Epiphanos an early church father we have Saint Jerome we have a bishop Papias or origins even Bishop Eusebius and also Clement of Alexandria and more of them just referred and quoted from the original Nazarene gospel written in Aramaic which circulated among the first believers under the titles such as the gospel of the hebrews or the gospel of the 12 and that was before even translated to hebrew and then before translated to greek then it was known the aramaic gospel according to matthew and is thought to be the source that laid the basis for most of the other gospels from that time we call it the pshita Aramaic. Pshita is the common language. And we have a bishop by the name Papias who lived around 60 AD, Bishop of Heriopolis in Asia Minor, tells that Matthew wrote his gospel in the Lunga Franca, in the Aramaic. So the disciples and Jesus, of course, spoke Aramaic. And of course, they spoke Hebrew and some Greek, but the Lunga Franca, to express themselves, their mother tongue was more Aramaic than Hebrew. Hebrew was used only in the synagogues, was used for the official prayers. But the teachings, the daily life teachings, was in Aramaic. So we know about this scripture, this Bible called the Pshita, to the Jews from the beginning of the early 2nd century. And a copy was in the library of the Rabbical College at Tiberias. And in the 3rd century, another copy was in the library at Caesarea and had been assembled by the martyr Pamphalios and was known to St. Jerome in the 4th century. He says that the Nazarenes of Aleppo in Syria also had manuscript of the Aramaic Matthew, which he was allowed to copy. And more than that, Eusebius, a bishop who lived in Caesarea in the 4th century, describes the 12 apostles as quite common men and for the Greeks as barbarians with no knowledge of any tongue but only Syrian. And what Syrian means? Only Syrians means Aramaic. And after Jesus gives the disciples the great commission, And to preach his message to all the world, Eusebius has them ask, but how can we do it? How, pray, can we preach to the Romans? We are men bred up to use the Aramaic tongue only. What language can we speak to the Greeks? Now, this helps to understand that Eusebius, the bishop, means that Matthew wrote the gospel originally in Aramaic. When he states for Matthew, who had at first preached to the Hebrews when he was about to go to the other peoples. What did he preach to the Hebrews? In Aramaic. The other people, how? Committed his gospel to writing in his native tongue. You can read this from Eusebius, Ecclesiastical History, Book 3. And the key here is committed his gospel to writing in his native tongue, which is Aramaic. Eusebius, the bishop, makes it very clear that the apostles spoke Aramaic. Only so, obviously, he refers to Matthew's native tongue. He means Aramaic and not any other language. Eusebius, who is the source of our 
important early church father scriptures and he mentions that Jesus and the apostles spoke Aramaic. He had information available to him that we no longer possess today. So join me in this journey of reading the scripture from the original Aramaic. I will be doing this on monthly basis for free on Zoom once a month book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and then give you the interpretation of the original mindset and the heart of Jesus and his disciples in the original language. You will be hearing from my own mouth the same sentences, the same language, the same scripture Jesus was speaking and teaching from his own mouth to the disciples, to the early church. And together we're going to explore the layers and the depth of the Aramaic way of thinking. The Middle Eastern Jesus in his right context, in the right culture and customs of scripture. You're going to see all the links for all the courses, all the links in the description below. And if you are hearing this podcast in the future, you can go back and listen to all these recordings of reading scripture from the original Aramaic, from the Pshita Bible, translated to English of today for people to understand the past, to understand the real meaning of the idioms, to understand the real meaning of the parables, to understand the culture, the custom, and the context. I know this is a very long project. This will be a lot of hard work, and I'm giving all of that for free because I want many people in the West, especially, to know about the original scripture, the Aramaic Bible, the Pshita that exists. We, the early church, the Maronites, the Assyrians, the Christians had protected because of persecution the original book, the original translation of the Bible in Aramaic. And we have it in our church, in our homes. We know the languages because we attend these old traditional churches. Still today, there are people speaking Aramaic. It's not a dead language like what people say or what Google say. But it's a live language. There are still people in Jerusalem, in Haifa, in Galilee, in Syria, in Lebanon, all over the Middle East that speaks the Aramaic of the first century, Aramaic of Jesus Christ. Welcome to this new free course of reading scripture in Aramaic throughout the, all the New Testament from the book of Matthew till Revelation. Again, I'm so excited about this project. So, share the word about it. Tell more people about this free course. Then you can register by going to the website walkingtheholyland.com and on the top menu, you will see in the main bar menu at the top in the center, you will see the four letters RSVP and you can click on that and it will take you to a image, to a screen and shows you all the lectures that are coming soon and all of these lectures are free of course some of them as i said reading the aramaic of the new testament then we have all the time virtual bible studies and we have so many teachings every week for free but again this podcast is focusing on reading the scripture from the original aramaic and at the top menu and you see to the right side of the home button something called online courses and if you click on that another menu come down with four categories free courses live courses paid courses virtual tours you can choose any of them if you choose free courses there are more than 50 
lectures about different subjects from scripture, deep understanding of the first century mindset about Israel, about the culture, about uh, a lot of information. And then you go to the live courses. That's what's important for this podcast. And when you click live courses, you're going to go and have an option of the course Aramaic reading of the New Testament. It's going to be every Thursday at 7 p.m. once a month at the beginning of each Thursday of each month. And it will be for around one hour and it will be for free. And it will start in March 10 in a few days, March 10, 2022. And you can click and push the button book now and then you can register your name and you can follow all these lessons and get updates. Also, you can go to paid courses in the same menu, bar menu. And when you click paid courses, there are many courses that you can purchase. For example, there is a course about geography of the Bible. Eight complete lessons, eight hours in details. There's a course about the Torah portion, six lessons of understanding the Hebraic way of thinking, Torah. And then there is another course, Learn the Aramaic Alphabets and the Lord's Prayer. And these are paid courses. But I am talking and focusing about the free course, the live course of reading the scripture from the Aramaic original language to the English. I'm so excited about this project. I'm looking forward to see you soon. Again, all the description, all the links are below in the podcast description with all the details and share the news. Share this podcast with more people. My vision and my heart for the word of God, for the truth to go out for free and people will be set free to understand the right interpretation of the scripture. We need to understand the truth and the truth will set us free. How we can do that? By studying the language of Jesus, by understanding the words of Jesus and the sentences he pronounced from his own mouth. And we're going to go through this journey together, me and you, of understanding the Bible in its original Aramaic language. This is so exciting. And share this news with your friends, with your churches, with your neighbors, at work, wherever you go. Because all my heart is to spread the words of the gospel to the entire world. The Aramaic gospel, the pshita, the simple, the common Aramaic language of Jesus and his disciples from the first century, 2,000 years ago. God bless your hearts, and I will see you soon next week.